Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with a review of a Caveco All Sport, Caveco All Sport Anthracite Fountain Pen. Now this one has the uh, has the optional clip, which is an extra, um, and it's in black, which is I think quite a nice match for this particular Anthracite. Caveco All Sport fountain pen. Um, there are silver clips and goldy coloured clips available as well. And for those of you who've already subscribed to my channel, you will know that I absolutely adore the Caveco Sport because it is a great fountain pen. Now, stay tuned because I have got a bit of an update on Caveco nibs. Um, for those of you who saw my uh, video about the Caveco frosted sport double broad nibs um, back in 2018 I believe it was now um, you'll know that I had a few issues with them and this Caveco sport also has a double broad nib which I do have issues with again however I will use this as an illustration about how you really do need to marry uh, it's the holy trinity the ink the nib and the paper if one of those is not quite right, your writing experience is not going to be great. So, let's talk about the pen first. So, it is a Caveco Sport type pen. I mean, it's got this hexagonal uh, cap, round barrel, quite a short pocket pen. And these clips do slide on and off, so you can take it off. So, this is what the uh, pen looks like without the clip. As you can see there, Caveco All Sport, Germany. And this is the 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 uh, excuse me. This is the anthracite finish, which is a sort of greyish. It's I'd say it's almost gone metal, but more um, more grey. Not quite. Uh, there's no brown in this whatsoever. And it's a nice looking fountain pen. I do like the uh, the clip on this. Just slide that to wherever you want. And these clips, are, I find them functional, they're springy, tight enough, everything else. But I don't like the fact that they can slide off. So when you're trying to push the pen into, say, a pocket or a pen roll, and you haven't lifted this clip clear, what can happen is it slides off and it eventually just slides off the whole pen, which is somewhat annoying so I generally don't bother with these clips on the top we've got the uh, usual Caveco stuff going on up there and at the bottom there's the typical dimple now these pens do unscrew to one cap and you are presented with this short all metal aluminium uh, round fountain pen which, to be honest, you can write with uncapped, uh, sorry, unposted rather. Um, and I find it's quite a good pen to write with, the Caveco Sports, unposted. It's good for quick notes because this cap only takes a few turns. One turn, about one and three quarter turns to uncap. So you can take a quick note, easily cap the pen, and these these caps are really good they are secure i mean they don't tend to shake loose and start unscrewing very easily at all so that is what the pen looks like uncapped and posted which of course these pens are designed to post posting is very deep very secure and you get more of a full-size fountain pen now with this all sport the uh, anthracite version it's not particularly heavy um, I will weigh the pen I don't normally weigh pens uh, because I feel that when you provide viewers with lots of different figures and dimensions and everything else it doesn't mean anything 28 grams doesn't feel an awful lot different than 23 grams in the hand um, but this is um, it's, a, it's an all sport so it's all metal and I thought you might want to know exactly how heavy this is or light as it actually is so yeah pose quite well this clip doesn't get in the way you can it's not thankfully it's not a screw to post pen so you can put the clip on or the cap 
however you want and it really does po uh, pose securely it's a very very nice comfortable length of fountain pen to write with so let's weigh the pen to begin with before we go any further so turn this on and with the cap and the clip 23.3 grams all up without the clip 20.4 so you're not looking at a hugely heavy pen with this all metal fountain pen on capped get this to stay 11.3 grams so I mean you're not talking about a heavy substantial fountain pen this isn't like some brass fountain pens like the Quebec All Sport Brass it's fairly lightweight with it being aluminium so let's get onto the writing sample and talk about the uh, these double broad nibs from Caveco because this is one of those pens that I did have issues with or I do have issues with um, I bought this pen second hand for a very good price from a UK based seller and they offered choice of two nibs you could either have the original double broad Caveco nib or a number five I think it was a medium nib generic medium nib and I thought there's probably a reason for this but I thought no I'm gonna go with the double broad nib because I've got plenty of Caveco medium nibs um, and I thought let's see what this is like so we shall see how this pen actually writes I'll try and get this on camera There we go, that's typical. Squeaky, hard, well, it's more, more of a skip than a hard start. And as I said, this is a double broad nib. So it's writing fairly well on this uh, this Rhodia paper. Try again here. It is a broad nib. Quick brown, not broad. <laughs> Quick brown fox. Now this is interesting because what I was finding on the Op Oxford um, notebook optic paper was this nib was really really skippy. There we go. That's that's a typical example. Can you hear that? There we go. So it's it, it's almost like it hard starts at the start of every sentence. And on these smooth papers like Rhodia, to be honest, this is better. This Rhodia pad is better uh, than the optic paper from Oxford Notebooks. But you can see there is still skipping and there is squeaking. And what I did, I did have a look at the uh, the tipping on this nib to see if there was any um, any um, baby's bottom, for example, which is. A known issue with Caveco nibs when they're double broad and there wasn't much that I could see I did feel that the nib was perhaps over polished so I did take this uh, this nib to some uh, 12,000 grit micro mesh wet and dry paper to uh, try try to sort of roughen it up a bit but as you can see yeah it it's not consistent I mean it's a nicely writing nib, it's very smooth, there's no issues with the um, actual smoothness. And yeah, for a double broad nib that's that's reasonably wet. This is just a generic blue cartridge that I put in here, nothing fancy. And it lays down ink. And once you're writing with this pen, if you don't actually ever stop to write a second sentence, it just keeps writing, it's really really good. As you can see, I mean, as far as line variation as well, we'll just try that. So no pressure, more pressure. You squeeze a bit more ink out, but it's not 
flex flex, flex nib at all. Um, I did find that reverse writing is actually more consistent than using the nib in its correct orientation. There you go, skip. You're a hard start. So that is the issue that I've had. So what I'm going to do is go to some really rubbish absorbent paper. Excuse the reversing wagons around here. Go to some really rubbish absorbent paper. And I'll just talk for a moment while we uh, let this thing. I mean, it, it, the nib literally on optic paper by now would hard start. On this paper, nothing. And this is because the paper is more absorbent and it is creating that. I don't know the full physics of it, but the surface tension of the ink on really smooth paper does not play well with this nib. Uh, there's still, still a little bit of a hard start there. However, that is this paper, which, to be honest, is still quite smooth. I shall have a quick look. I know what I've got. I've got one of the worst fountain pen papers known to man, moleskin. If I go to the back of this... <laughs> No, that's still too smooth. You know what? This needs really, really nasty cheap paper, which I shall see if I can find. Have I got anything that I can use here? Yes. <laughs> this is my wife's notebook. I'll just pinch this because I'm using her desk at the moment. So I don't tell her. New notes. New notebook. These things not fancy and pen friendly at all they are really really <laughs> horrible pads to use but as you can see have been talking for a while no issues with this really rough absorbent paper so there you have it it really is down to um the the interface, if you like, with the nib and the paper and the type of ink you're using. And with Caveco nibs, they are beginning to develop a bit of a reputation as being over-polished in the online fountain pen communities. And it's a shame because these double broad nibs are really, really good. And you see, there's still a bit of a, a bit of a hard start there. Um, and these nibs, they're smooth, they write really well. But you do get these hard starting and skipping issues. Try again. Uh, it's, it's, it's much better. On optic paper, absolutely terrible. The start of every sentence. I mean, literally, you write the sentence, you put your full stop in, move to the next line, say, and you get nothing. Whereas on this rougher, more absorbent paper, it is writing. And this would be a really good uh, pen for using at work because it is very, very durable. I mean, you're looking at solid, solid aluminium. It's not um, lightweight, easily deformed, thin aluminium. Uh, and this pen will do a very good job in the workplace on really bad paper. But I, even this, you can see, is not, it's not perfect. And that's really quite annoying because reverse writing you see absolutely fine so you go from a double broad down to I'd say a fine whereas this double broad you know I mean there is a difference there oops no right the, that way around so there is a difference and I do like these pens an awful lot and it is a shame that I find that the fine, extra fine and medium nibs on Caveco uh, pens are excellent, really, really good. But as soon as you get into the broad and double broad territory, they can be a bit hit and miss, which is a real shame because I love these pens other than that. And to be honest, the medium nibs are broad and wet enough for most people's purposes, including my own. Um, 
so I, I don't really need double broad uh, for these for these fountain pens um, I mean these are cartridge converters and I would recommend using cartridges um, of whatever type uh, standard international obviously they are standard international cartridge converter fountain pens and that's a nice thing because there's no proprietary cartridges going on here you can get a converter for the Caveco Sport but it's a tiny horrible little thing which holds hardly any ink and it would be there we go would be empty within minutes uh, using a double broad nib so there we have the Caveco Sport Anthracite now don't let this nib put you off if you are thinking of buying one of these pens because just choose a medium nib or a fine or an extra fine uh, but it is interesting to see how these double broad nibs perform on paper so thank you very much for watching this video I hope you found it useful and do give me a thumbs up down below and uh, if, uh, if you'd be so kind because that always helps me to know that I'm producing the right content for people and even better a subscription to my channel would be absolutely perfect so thank you very much for that thanks very much for watching and I shall see you next time bye